Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Welcome to November of 2022. And as always, welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the sign of Aries, sun, moon, and rising for the month of November 2022 and beyond. But please keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading. I'm sorry, this is also a timeless reading, okay? Um, doesn't necessarily have to resonate for you for the month of November. Um, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined and haven't done so already. And if you'd like a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below. All right, Aries. So let's get into this. Um, I've been sitting with your energy for a little bit and aggression and anger is the first thing that comes up. But that's not out of the ordinary because um, as of <clears throat> December 31st, December 30th, De December, October, excuse me, as of October 30th, 31st, Mars is officially retrograde and Mars will be retrograde until late March of 2023. Okay. Um, something may happen by the time we reach December 31st, because I did say that. I don't even know why I said December, um, Freudian slip, uh, keep an eye on that. Um, and, and like I said, we are talking about the energies of the month of November right now, but I do feel like part of the message that's coming through for you right now, Aries, is a bit of an extended, um, time frame because there is a great deal of focus collectively right now. There's a great deal of focus on the effects of Mars retrograde, which again, go from October 30th, 31st to, I want to say like the mid twenties of March of 2023. So late March of 2023. Um, and that's going to be a pretty tumultuous, potentially rough time period for all of us, the whole collective, but you Aries, you are your ruling planet is mars you are ruled by mars you and scorpio are most likely going to be the most affected by this the most directly um for you aries anger and aggression um is what came up for you uh in immediately or in initially i was sitting with your energy and i just i saw this energy of someone um angry very angry like lurching forward or just like driving forward there's an there's and something behind that energy of this anger and or aggression there is also a desire for change some sort of change needs to be made wants to be made is desired to be made one of the things that um i wrote down some notes here for you as i was just sitting here with your energy for channeling for the aries collective um, and one of the main things that i got for this energy this desire for change is enough is enough so for some of you i wonder if you're coming you'll be coming to an awareness of um maybe how some of your interpersonal relationships have been lackluster um i, I also want to say i want to keep in mind guys that we are getting into the holiday season and for many people that is often um that is often a pretty rough time period. So for some of you, this could be family members, friends, colleagues, something, whatnot, what not, whatever. But there is a strong desire for change in this energy for you, Aries. And um, oh, what was I going to say about that? Oh, the, even if you don't necessarily, even if you're not in the mindset of I need to change this, I want to change this. Also understand that the anger and aggression that comes up for you could be a gr very strong catalyst to make that change. I want to say, be very careful of this anger and aggression. Be very careful not to pop off. Be very careful to keep yourself in check during this time, just because of the whole retrograde motion of Mars. Okay. Um, but anger is a really great way to drive change, to create some sort of change is a really great energy to channel. If you're able to do so to channel it and direct it towards something constructive, instead of just it always allowing to be allowed to run amok and, um, be used towards destruction. Now, if you do need to destroy something, if you do need to end something, if you need to pull something down, obviously this anger and aggression would be a good useful tool for you, but just be careful how you channel that energy okay now the other thing that I got here as I was feeling through this this aggression this anger this desire for change this energy of enough is enough for you um, uh, I also I sank a little bit deeper into it or I went a bit deeper and it changed into a blue energy um, and two things with that blue energy the first thing is obviously blue is the color of the throat chakra so obviously for some of you that does mean that there is some sort of 
expression. There's something that needs to be expressed here. For some of you, you, you desire to speak your truth. You need to speak up about something. This anger and aggression, maybe it's coming towards you from someone else. We could be speaking to a cross watcher here, or I could be channeling an energies, the energies for an Aries that could be in your life, and you're watching this now on behalf of them. Um, so if the roles could be reversed here, take it as it resonates. If it does fit for you in that the roles are reversed, then please allow that to happen. Take it as it resonates, place it in your life as it fits. This is a general reading. Um, but someone may be coming towards you angry or aggressive. Uh, th there could be a need and or desire to express something, speak your truth, but then also that blue energy um, is kind of like that, those feelings of I'm blue or I'm down. And I, I did see somebody crying. So for some of you here, especially if you are cross watching for an Aries and all of a sudden they really start to get super aggressive with you, really angry with you, really abrasive with you, there very well could be that is a form of a defense mechanism. Again, remember we are entering into the holiday season in many parts of the world right now, whatever holiday you, you celebrate, but this is often a very rough and painful time period for a lot of people. So I am picking up on that for some of you Aries here and maybe the cross watchers that you're watching for. Um, for some individuals, what you need to understand is this anger and aggression is a defense mechanism. They're being triggered and deep down underneath the surface, they're very, they're deeply sad about something. I did, I personally had a dream a few nights ago where I connected with a very angry part of myself who very much looked like, uh, was depicted as the Hulk. Um, and I was able to lure it in a way that helped, that allowed me to kind of like, instead of it chasing me, I ended up chasing it and I caught it. And when I caught this Hulk-like aspect to myself, it broke down and started crying because really underneath the surface, there's deep sorrow, there's deep fear, there's deep pain, but the facade or the defense mechanism is this anger and aggression. So this could be something that starts off for you during the month of November, Aries, but also, again, looking past just the month of November throughout this Mercury retrograde, I'm sorry, not Mercury, <laughs> so typical. I mean, we're so used to saying Mercury retrograde, but during this Mars retrograde period, Especially if I'm not sure if Mercury does go retrograde during this time period, but even if it does, especially if Mercury goes retrograde during this period, but really during this Mars retrograde period, I feel like there's going to be an ability to gain some deep understanding in terms of some defense mechanisms that are um, facilitated through anger and aggression, but that are also ruled or fueled by fear and sadness, deep, deep, deep sadness, okay? I'm gonna give this one more shuffle for you, Aries, and then we're gonna get into the cards here for you for this message here for the month of November. So what's going on for Aries this month? What messages do we have? What guidance can we bring to Aries this month? The first card is the King of Cups. Scorpio energy, potentially, um, but emotional maturity. Four of Cups. Ooh. Okay. The King of Cups, the Four of Cups, the Three of Pentacles reversed, and then the Star. Um, yeah, owning up to something, speaking up for something, okay? Having the guts, having the uh, ability, having the emotional wherewithal, but really the feeling that I'm getting with this King of Cups energy for you, Aries, is having the emotional fortitude, the emotional awareness, the emotional maturity to speak up for something that you no longer want to be a part of. Your overall energy is the Eight of Pentacles, Aries. And I feel like with this Eight of Pentacles, you have really um, put forth consistent effort towards something, okay? Uh, that that uh, There has been a level of commitment that you have been involved with. You have been committed to something. You have been putting forth the effort. I get this feeling that you have been... Um, a part of this situation, this circumstance, maybe even this romance, potentially take it as it resonates. I did hear that, but that's not the full thing that we're focusing on here. But if that resonates for you, some sort of romantic situation, then please take it as it resonates. I feel like you've been loyal and or committed to something, King of Cups, but now you're at a place where it's like, I don't wanna be a part of this any longer, Four of Cups. Um, I think, and this may be where some of this anger and aggression is coming from. Okay, um, at this point, Aries, you're really desiring to let go of this, 
but you haven't been allowing yourself to. The main thing that I'm feeling for this for the Aries Collective right now is you may be over the month of November, maybe even in beyond and beyond, you may be in the process of coming to terms with how you don't want to be a team player in this any longer. You have the three of pentacles in reverse. Something about this is not fulfilling to you. But I keep, I am, I keep hearing some sort of lack of mentality type of energy. It may be, we don't have the five of pentacles here just yet. Maybe it'll come out in a moment, but it may very well be that there is some sort of lack mentality that has been keeping you as a part of this situation. Um, and some of this anger and aggression that I'm feeling for you could be pent up, pent up because for an extended period of time, you wanted to be released from this situation and or circumstance. Um, but now what I'm hearing is you're finally coming to terms with the fact that you really don't want to be, or maybe even and or shouldn't even be involved with this situation any longer. Okay. There's something else that you would, that you dream of. There is something else that you might, that you, it feels like you would rather pursue something else you would like to be a part of. Now, also with the star here, um, there may have been a great deal of healing that has helped, that has been involved in the situation and or circumstances that you have, or circumstance that you have been in. Whatever this situation is for you, you uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the situation started because, uh, or you got into the situation because of a level of lack mentality. I, had, I was hearing that up until I, I mentioned it. Spirit really wanted me to put that out there for you. Um, there was something, some, this in situation involves and or involved lack mentality in some way. And it could very well have been feelings of lack, feeling of, feelings of inadequacy, feelings of ineptitude as what caused you to be aligned with this certain situation or circumstance to begin with. Okay, but throughout this situation and or circumstance, you did a lot of work. Eight of Pentacles, you've been consistent here. You've been really working on yourself. You've been really working on healing. You've been doing the consistent work. You have been consistent and or committed in this situation. And thus you've grown ultimately to this King of Cups energy where now you can really face the real reality surrounding the circumstances here. And for some reason, you Aries or the person that you're dealing with, what, whomever this person is, does no longer wants to be involved. And quite frankly, I feel like you or this person have not wanted to be involved for quite some time now. And again, that's where this anger and or aggression is coming from because it's been pent up. Okay. So what I'm kind of picking up on here, Aries, is that over, you know, this extended period throughout the month of November, out into March during Mars retrograde, that may be coming up for you. Okay. Mars retrograde may be helping to make it easier for you to be to, for that, for that, um, facade of keeping it together to break down. And now you're lashing out. Whereas in the past, you have been able to keep it under wraps. But understand, it's not really about Mars retrograde. That may help, that may help. But what it's really about is what's going deep down on, what's going on deep down within you. What it is you truly want and or need at this time. I'm hearing for some of you, this cycle is broken. The cycle is over, okay? And instead of being the mature person here and moving forward, moving on, some of you may feel like you are trapped here or you may be needlessly holding yourself here, which is causing anger and aggression to build up because you're like, I don't even wanna be here anymore. You have healed. And I even, especially, yes, you have healed, but also I feel like for some of you, there is something else that you wish to be a part of or something else that you dream of that you would like to pursue. Okay, let's, I, I want to start clarifying some things here. I want to start by clarifying the three of pentacles in reverse. This is, I, it's here in this three of pentacles reverse that I'm hearing the lack mentality energy. And again, I, the strongest thing that I'm feeling here, Aries, is that your association with this circumstance and or situationship was facilitated by, driven by, fueled by a sense of lack mentality. And the strongest, most dominant thing that I'm feeling here, Aries, is that somebody, I mean, whomever it is you were dealing with, whether this is a group of, a group of people or just like a specific relationship that you have going on, at first, 
there was some sort of teamwork energy involved with this situation. And that's mainly because you and this person or you and these people were seeing eye to eye at that time. Okay, so however it is you guys had teamed up, whether this is romantically or platonically, whatever, however it is that you teamed up, it was an equal exchange to a certain extent. You guys were on the same page. But now someone seems to have grown up, has seems to have either let this lack mentality go, left it behind, or sees through it, and or sees through it, sees past it, and now recognizes that, uh, that at least at this point, this is no longer an, a teammate situation, or at the very least, you guys are no longer working together or you are no longer seeing eye to eye. So there's some sort of discrepancy or disconnect when it comes to some sort of teamwork aspect. Clarify the three of pentacles for in reverse for Aries, please. We have the queen of swords. This is actually ex exactly what I'm feeling here. The, I, someone is recognizing and or realizing that this really is not a team player type of situation or maybe also what I'm dominantly feeling here is maybe someone just no longer wants to be a part of this team. I feel like somebody here recognizes some sort of toxicity here or maybe just at least the very least a discrepancy. It may very well be that someone, oh yes, and you know what actually? Yeah. Um, underneath the Eight of Pentacles, which is which is what the overall energy at the bottom of the deck in the beginning of the reading is the Queen of Pentacles. I feel like somebody here is starting to recognize that this team situation is not mm, is no longer balanced, and I would say it's no longer or Spirit is saying it's no longer balanced now because of how someone has grown, someone has changed, someone has evolved. But really with this Queen of Swords energy, for some of you, I feel like somebody here is recognizing how this was never balanced all along. Clarify the Three of Pentacles in reverse, please. We have the Eight of Swords, then the Ten of Pentacles. All right, the Ten of Pentacles to me here is representing the end of the situation, is representing the completion of the situation. Um, the Ten of Pentacles also would represent a long-term energy, would represent your longevity, would represent your finances, your, your but finances in terms of like um, uh, uh, lineage or inheritance or your career. The Ten of Pentacles could represent 10th house energies. Um, but I, this to me, often the Ten of Pentacles can represent family, family possessions like the family home, the family estate, stuff like that. Could also represent your finances in terms of your career or your long-term goals or money that you have been saving, working towards saving for a long time. But also for me, sometimes as a reader, the Ten of Pentacles can represent the completion of a life circumstance. And that's what I feel like it represents here. With this... Again, you have the Queen of Swords, but you also have the Eight of Swords. And in this Eight of well, typically in the Eight of Swords energy, the, the, the individual is blindfolded. But the fact that the individual is blindfolded here in this Eight of Swords makes a lot of sense to me. Because it feels like over this extended amount of time, over this time period, someone has slowly but surely began to see again. It's like now at this point, the blindfold has come off and you are able to see the confines by which this group association or this partnership or this relationship has stood. Or, um, I'm sorry, the confines by which you have been held in this place. Okay, at this point, I feel like the blindfold has come off and you can see now how you can cut yourself out of this situation. Someone has wised up here. Somebody sees things maybe even from a higher perspective. Um, that's very interesting. And then the overall energy you have here, Aries, is the, uh, the lovers. This could very well be a romantic situation, um, a, 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 a romantic situation of convenience, um, but also this could be a, a romantic situation of, um, this could be some sort of trauma bond that you have been associated with, Aries, or Crosswatcher. But at this point, 
you are in a place to make a choice for yourself, maybe even make a better decision for yourself. Pause for a second. And this lover's energy is also where the King of Cups comes in because I feel like Aries, there's some sort of decision that you are going to have to make that ultimately may not be easy for you to do, but it will be the right one. And I feel like there is a, a strong level of emotional relief that you will be receiving should you choose to separate yourself or cut yourself free from this situation, all right? I wanna clarify the Four of Cups for you now. Why the apathy here? Why don't you wanna be involved anymore? What's this Four of Cups for Aries? There's the act mentality right there, the Five of Pentacles. Okay, the Five of Pentacles is with the Knight of Pentacles. Why do you no longer want to? Somebody here doesn't want to move. I feel like one of the strongest feelings here, then we have the Page of Cups. One of the strongest things that I'm feeling for you, Aries, is that you or this person that you're connected to, maybe this cross watcher, has reached a point where they, would, they, they want to change their circumstances. They no longer want to be in this lack mentality any longer. They have grown. They are choosing something different. And I feel like this person may keep trying to extend some sort of love here. No, actually, I feel like it's the other person that's wanting to extend love. One person wants to move forward methodically, Knight of Pentacles. The other person keeps showing up with some sort of emotional piecemeal. It's as if they, they, they don't want the situation to change. So they're showing up in this way, Page of Cups. The other person is showing up as the Knight of Pentacles. I'm ready to step out of this space. I'm ready to get out of here. And I feel like with this page of cups here, the other person keeps showing up with some sort of immature dreams or excuses or reasons to not change or I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but anything else for the four of cups here? I mean, one person has definitely grown into the king of cups energy. See, look, then we're back to the eight of pentacles as the overall energy here. One person has grown into the King of Cups energy. And because of that King of Cups energy, this person wants to slowly and methodically move forward from this lack mentality point of view, while the other person is staying here. Page of Cups. Doesn't wanna grow, doesn't wanna evolve, doesn't wanna change, wants to stay the same. And that's exactly why you have this Four of Cups energy of apathy of like, well, if that's the case, like I've put so much work here into this. I've learned about my self-worth. I have changed my perspective. You know, it's so crazy. Hanged man. I was seeing the hanged man when I was talking about the Eight of Swords. I almost said the Eight of Swords kind of feels like an, a hanged man type of energy because it does feel like while maybe you're still bound a little bit, at least the blindfold is off. So now you can see how you can unbind yourself. The other, the other person doesn't seem to want to do that. They just, they don't want to change. They want to stay the same. And that's why we have this apathy here of the Four of Cups. Okay, so finally then, let's clarify the star for Aries, please. Clarify the star for Aries. The Nine of Cups. Okay, wish fulfillment on both cases. You, the star is ultimate wish fulfillment. And then, uh, you know, emotion, uh, ultimate soul level emotional wish fulfillment. And the nine of cups is mundane happiness, everyday contentment, potentially. The nine of cups can be a little bit of an indulgent energy, but that's not what I'm feeling here. I, I feel like somebody here, Aries, feels like, un understands, knows how they can be happier on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily basis. And that is what they want to go after. That is what they want to pursue. That's what they want to change in their lives. The next card you have is the Five of Swords. Good Lord. Clarify the star, please. But someone is actively trying to sabotage this, Aries. And then the Two of Swords. Someone doesn't want to see you happy. The High Priestess, though, is the overall energy. I feel like at this point, Aries, or Cross Watcher, you know of this. You are aware of this. You could be dealing with a Pisces. You could be on the cusp of Pisces. You could be an Aries Pisces cusper. Um, you may also be dealing with a water sign in terms of cancer. I was feeling, I, I don't know why I picked up on Cancerian energy. Um, maybe it's the clinginess because sometimes cancer can be fairly clingy, but that's somebody that's really 
not well aspected, doesn't know themselves very well, is not very self-aware, is not very self-reflective, whatnot, whatever kind of thing like that. But it doesn't have to be a Cancerian. Um, but for some reason I was picking up on that. Maybe you have Cancer somewhere else in your chart. But you have the star here clarified by the Nine of Cups, the Five of Swords, and the Two of Swords. So uh, Aries or Crosswatcher, whomever this is resonating for, somebody here is dreaming of something better. The star is looking off into the future, okay? Is trying to find a way to move forward towards ultimately what it is that they want to be happy or what it is that they need to be happy. Also represented by this Nine of Cups here. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It could just be a level of contentment, happiness, peace, peacefulness. But there isn't any peace here. Five of Swords. There's nothing but arguments, battles, um, uh, conditional love, conditional thinking, conditional circumstances, uh, someone trying to sabotage the other person from being happy or moving forward because they themselves don't want to move forward, don't want to do what it is necessary for them to do to move forward, to be happy, to change the circumstances for themselves. Instead of growing and expanding and doing something new, they would rather stay the same and they would rather sabotage or hold down the people that they have in association with them in this space to keep them from moving on and moving away. But Aries, whomever wants to move away here, ain't trying to pay attention to that two of swords. Absolutely not. But also this two of swords could represent a level of denial from the person that's in the five of swords here. Okay, take it as it resonates. But mainly because we are clarifying the star, which feels like an ultimate wish fulfillment type of energy here, you see a way out. I, I just heard you see the bigger picture. You see how things can change. You see how things can be better now at this point. It feels like because of that, someone is, uh, is directly objecting any sort of Five of Swords energy, any sort of lose-lose situation, sabotage, you know, lack mentality, whatever. And, it is, and instead is focusing on how to move forward, how to be... How to be happy. Okay. And I, I feel like this person is being pretty secretive about it. Uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck, you have the high priestess, which is secrets. And then you have the lovers to the devil. The lovers and the devil are mirror images of each other. Someone is actively planning their escape or is actively figuring out a way how to move away from this situation, how to release themselves from this devilish grasp or this toxic relationship. Closing message for Aries, please. Sun, moon, and rising. Closing message for Aries, sun, moon, and rising, please. Just one card, the three of wands. Someone is future oriented and yeah, look, and then you're back to the eight of pentacles. You know, um, someone may have really shot themselves in the foot here. Really have, really may have. Because what I feel like happened here is for some of you, you guys got into this, into this partnership, whether it's romantic or platonic, you got into this partnership for some of you under the agreement that you were going to work on things. The reason why you were able to come together is because in the beginning of this situation ship, you agreed with each other or you saw eye to eye and were like, yo, we got to do something about this. And if we're going to do it, we might as well do it together. And both of you agreed, but only one of you did the work. And now the one that did the work is ready to move forward. Is looking forward and is like, okay, well, okay, I've reached this checkpoint. I've reached this um, milestone, this marker, whatnot, whatever. Where do I go from here? And the strongest feeling that this is giving me right now is this person who is ready to move forward to the next phase, to the next step, is just ready to move on with their lives, is fully aware that they can't take that other person with them. What I'm also hearing is they are not allowing me to move any further. And I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to start the next step. And they are actively deceiving me, I'm hearing, and are trying to keep me here. So I have to go on without them. 
Somebody shot themselves in the foot. Because for some of you, maybe this is a small amount of you, but for some of you, that person that didn't do the work actually never really intended to do the work. Didn't actually believe that, maybe even didn't believe that you or the other person would do the work, so they kind of slacked off. It's unfortunate. But that's not even all that bad. That aspect isn't all that bad because for some of you, it is fairly innocent. Somebody, the other person maybe just wasn't able to keep up with the pace and that is a-okay. But what's not so okay is holding someone else back because you don't want to be left alone. I don't know. That's the, the best way I can say it. You won't be left alone though. I'm sure there's someone else that you could find that you would be able to work with. I mean, you're not the only person that, that would need to go through something like, or go through a level of evolving or healing or whatnot, whatever, but it's not really okay to hold someone else back. Just, uh, I'm hearing selfishly. Now keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates, but the dominant thing that I'm hearing and feeling is that whomever's trying to hold the other person back here is doing it from a selfish place. And that's not cool. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined and haven't done so already. And if you would like a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below where I list the readings that I offer and my email address. Shoot me an email, let me know you're interested, and I'll be more than happy to get you all hooked up. Also, I invite you guys to check out Patreon. Um, we do have a few tiers where you can get either a 10% or 20% discount on your personal readings throughout the month. There are also, there is also one tier um, of which you get for $55, you get one personal 30 minute live session or recorded a live uh, recorded reading with me, plus all of the content that is available on Patreon. And normally one reading, like a 30 minute session or a recorded reading with me is $65. So that's a really great, um, that's a really great tier to go with if you're interested in, in getting a personal reading with me, but also being a part of Patreon. But um, if you wanna do that, act fast because those spaces are limited, yes? All right, Aries, I'm gonna leave it there. I love you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye. <laughs>